Welcome to episode two of the DFB Retailer Support Hub webinar series, which is designed to assist retailers to prepare for and respond to domestic and family violence in the workplace and support employees who may be experiencing domestic and family violence at home. My name is Lindsay and I'm part of the team here at the National Retail Association. As the modern voice of retail in Australia, we represent and support employers in the retail and fast food industries with training and advice on a number of employment related matters, including supporting and managing workers experiencing domestic and family violence. This webinar has been created to assist employers to better understand domestic and family violence, to understand what action you can take if you suspect someone may be experiencing domestic and family violence, and what support services are available. As many workers may be reluctant to disclose their experience of domestic and family violence, employers and their workers need to be educated on what it looks like so that early intervention can occur to help people who are experiencing domestic and family violence. So what are the signs of domestic and family violence? In episode one, we explained that domestic and family violence can include emotional abuse, like criticising how someone looks or their parenting skills, verbal abuse, like yelling, shouting and swearing, stalking and harassment, like constantly following, texting or phoning someone, cyber stalking or tracking them through social media or GPS, like Find My Phone and other location services on smartphones and apps. Financial abuse, like withholding money necessary to survive or forcing someone to hand over their money. Physical abuse, like slapping, hitting, pushing or strangulation. Damaging property to frighten you, for example, punching holes in walls or breaking furniture. Social abuse, like not letting someone see their friends or family or isolating a person from people they care about. Spiritual abuse, like forcing attendance at religious activities or stopping a person from taking part in religious or cultural practices. Sexual abuse, like forcing or coercing a person to have sex and depriving someone of the necessities of life, such as food, shelter and medical care. One example of domestic violence that manifests in the work context is if a worker's partner or family member was trying to have the worker dismissed or disciplined. A clear sign of this might be a worker's partner sending an email to the owner or the manager of a store alleging misconduct like theft by the worker. But not all signs are this clear. Unfortunately, many of the signs of domestic and family violence are often dismissed or attributed to other causes by both the person experiencing the violence and others. Some more seemingly obvious signs like bruises, black eyes, broken bones or hearing loss can easily be dismissed as being caused by falls or the person being clumsy or having an accident. A worker's partner attending the shop or contacting others in the shop about the worker's whereabouts or activities can be a sign of abuse, but could also be attributed to the worker having a loving and doting partner. A reluctance to leave the shop after closing time because they want to avoid the person engaging in violence may be attributed to a committed work ethic. On the other hand, many signs of domestic and family violence can result in performance management or disciplinary action, including poor concentration, errors, slowness, inconsistency, consistent work quality, an unusual number of text messages or phone calls being received by the worker or responded to by the worker during the course of a day, absenteeism or poor timekeeping, regular requests for special accommodations like leaving work early or changes in the roster. There may also be emotional and psychological signs that lead to the worker being increasingly disconnected from others in the workplace, such as becoming unusually quiet and keeping away from others, emotional distress or flatness, tearfulness, depression or suicidal thoughts, signs of anxiety or fear or sensitivity about their home life. Retail is the largest employer of young people in the the country and children are also affected by domestic and family violence even if the violence is not perpetrated against them directly. Signs that a child you employ might be affected by domestic and family violence include copying abusive behaviour, bullying others or being cruel to animals, telling you that they're anxious, guilty, stressed or depressed about something that is happening outside of work, changes in their attendance and performance at work, getting in trouble with the law, 
attempting suicide or self-harm, and abusing drugs and alcohol. Finally, there are signs of domestic and family violence that may have no clear reason or that don't seem to add up, like the worker having money problems that don't seem to add up with their income and lifestyle. A worker may even wear clothing that is inappropriate for the weather, like long sleeves or turtlenecks, or wear sunglasses inside or unusually heavy makeup. It's also important to pay attention to signs that a worker may be engaging in domestic and family violence against someone. And these abusive behaviours may even be occurring during work time or in the workplace. For example, regularly texting, phoning or emailing their partner while they're at work, exhibiting high levels of agitation or aggression after they have had a personal phone call or using work IT systems to access private information about someone or stalk or harass them. Ultimately, everyone's experience of domestic and family violence is different. And so while employers and workers should look out for the signs that we've discussed, they should also look out for any behaviour in the workplace that is out of the ordinary and that doesn't seem to make sense. Identifying the signs of domestic and family violence is not the end of this process, it's just the beginning and it's then that you have to decide how you're going to act. Discussing domestic and family violence with someone who you believe may be engaging in violence or experiencing it is a difficult conversation, particularly if they're not the one raising it or choosing to actively disclose it. It may be easier for the person experiencing violence to disclose it and discuss it if the workplace is already aware of the impacts and signs of domestic and family violence and has sent a clear and consistent message to all workers that the workplace will respond in a non-judgmental and supportive way. This can assist to build trust with workers who are affected and reassure them that the workplace will be supportive and assist them to seek appropriate assistance. However, there may be factors which mean an employer or colleague have to discuss the topic before the worker experiencing violence is ready to disclose it themselves. For example, performance issues or absenteeism by the worker may result in you having to ask them for the reasons for these issues. Ultimately, early identification that a worker is experiencing difficulties will be more likely to lead to appropriate help being offered. This in turn could mean that the worker is able to deal with the situation far more effectively and minimise the impact on the workplace and their employment. From the outset, an employer should do their best to make sure that they are mentally ready and appropriately informed to support the person who they may think is experiencing violence. Due to the sensitive nature of such a discussion, the chances of it leading to the person successfully taking steps to end violence will be higher if the person they eventually disclose to is prepared to emotionally support them and refer them to the right specialist services. The initial discussion about domestic and family violence can be really difficult. An employee may be afraid of being judged or that if they disclose the issue to their employer, it will jeopardise their employment. They might get angry or defensive about the issue being raised by their employer. You need to pick the right time and place to have the conversation and make a strong commitment to confidentiality. Conversations should be held in private and a safe place at the workplace with enough time set aside to have a meaningful discussion. Any type of conversation which is intended to support an employee you think may be experiencing domestic violence should be prefaced with a strong commitment to confidentiality unless there is a clear threat or risk to the workplace, in which case you would be obliged to act by your duty of care. You should also communicate that you'll need to maintain a confidential record of your discussions relating to domestic and family violence. But it should be made clear that the recording of domestic and family violence concerns or incidents will have no negative impact on the worker's employment record. These records are required to be kept by employers to identify and monitor risks to workers as part of their obligations under work health and safety law and as part of the employer's duty to ensure the health and safety of both the worker they think may be experiencing domestic violence and other workers at the workplace under appropriate legislation. The worker may also wish to use any records that an employer keeps if they or the police are applying for a protection order. So you should ensure that the records are clear and accurate and any witnesses to incidents are noted. So back to the conversation with your employee. Firstly, ask if they're okay. Let your employee know that you're worried about them and that you're there for them to talk to. You could say something like, I've noticed that you seem a bit distracted and anxious lately. Is everything okay? 
Once the worker understands that you're there to support them and the parameters of your discussion, start by raising the most urgent issue, their health and safety. You should note any concerns you have for the worker's safety and also that of everyone in the workplace. If this is the first time that you're raising these concerns, you may also wish to start by outlining the cause for your concerns. Point out the signs that you believe may be indicators of domestic and family violence and note that you have concerns it could be connected and allow the worker to take the time to tell you when they feel comfortable. Try not to ask unnecessarily prying questions, but rather ask questions about what the workplace can do to help the worker to work safely. They understand their situation best, but you may, might be able to help them think of solutions. Solutions might include reminding all workers that they're not to disclose information about a worker to anyone outside of the workplace. Information like their rosters or which part of a store they might be working in. Start, finish times when they have their break. Other solutions might include allowing them to store certain possessions or clothing at work. Another idea might be to agree with them to perform their work in a more flexible manner. You might wish to inform your employee of any other workplace supports that they may wish to access, such as time off or support from a co-worker who has been specifically trained in domestic and family violence. Workers experiencing domestic and family violence also have certain rights and entitlements under the Fair Work Act, including unpaid domestic and family violence leave, which we'll discuss in more detail in a future webinar. If the conversation has been raised because you have concerns about an employee's performance or conduct and the employee makes a disclosure of their experience of DFB, you should acknowledge the difficult situation that is contributing to their performance and conduct at work. You should discuss how the workplace can support or assist that worker experiencing violence to address the performance and conduct matters or ask them if they require some flexibility or allowance to be made temporarily. Importantly, if the person's response indicates that they don't want to talk to you about anything that they may be experiencing, you need to respect that and don't close the door on future conversations about the employee's safety and well-being. If they don't want to talk, express your concern for them anyway. You need to reassure them that you'll stand by them and be ready to talk or help when they ask. And even if they don't disclose to you, you can still take steps to support them. Steps that you might consider helpful include suggesting that they speak with someone else that they might feel more comfortable with or reminding them that your workplace is supportive and that if violence were occurring, they should tell someone and if they tell someone, they will be supported. Or you could provide them with resources or the contact numbers for specialist support services. The next important thing to remember when engaging in these type of conversations is to believe what the person tells you. If during the conversation your employee makes a positive disclosure around their experience of domestic and family violence, this is a huge deal. Show them that you believe them and that they did the right thing by telling you. You also need to listen, reassure them and work out the next steps together. Remind them that when someone else makes a choice to be abusive or violent, it's never their fault. You should let them know that there are organisations that can help, including services to help them escape from violence if that's what they want to do. Don't provide any advice about what the worker should or shouldn't do with regard to the violence they're experiencing. Instead, we recommend that you provide the worker with the contact details of an appropriate specialist support service. Domestic and family violence is a very complicated matter and well-intentioned but ill-informed advice can result in risk to the safety of the person who is experiencing the violence. Often a person will require a range of specialist support services, including counselling, legal and court support, also accommodation. It's important that workers are made aware of these supports and that your workplace maintains an up-to-date detail of these agencies. A good starting point might be to refer someone to the National Sexual Assault Domestic and Family Violence Counselling Service, which they can reach on 1800 RESPECT. Queenslanders can also access DV Connect, a free and confidential telephone counselling, referral and information and support service. They have a dedicated men's line, which can be reached on 1800 600 636 and women's line at 1800 811. 811. There is also an app available for smartphone users called Daisy that connects people with support services near them and provides other information and support. It's designed for discretion with its discreet name and a flower icon. 
Talking about domestic and family violence can be difficult and emotionally charged for both the person experiencing violence and also a person who may be engaging in it. Ultimately, these matters need to be handled with sensitivity and confidentiality. Employers should temper their expectations when it comes to these difficult discussions involving domestic and family violence. The first discussion is unlikely to fix everything and end the violence. A feature of DFB is that it involves ingrained behaviours and the exercise of control, coercion and the taking away of power by someone close to the person experiencing violence. It can be hard for the person experiencing violence to address these behaviours or remove themselves from the situation. Situation. Breaking free or addressing abuse may take several attempts. So after the initial conversation with the employee concerned, there are a few more things that employers should note. The worker who has experienced domestic and family violence should be included in all future decisions about how to manage their employment with respect to their personal situation. Ensure that you check in and avoid implementing any changes at work without consulting them first. This worker is in a situation where they are already having their control and agency taken away from them. And it's important that you avoid contributing to this feeling. Recognise that this is just the start of what might be an extended process. Further discussion and safety planning will most likely be required, especially because attempting to leave a relationship or address abuse absolutely increases the risks and dangers of violence accelerating for the person who is experiencing the violence. But don't let that discourage you. Your support as an employer is crucial. Continued employment provides the worker with a number of supports that may mean they can eventually break free of violence, including continued social connection, access to financial independence, and time away from the person using violence while they're at work. So thank you for joining us today as we dive further into how an employer can support someone in the workplace who may be experiencing domestic and family violence. Please join us for our next webinar where we'll discuss the health and safety risks at work in greater detail and outline what you can do to manage them. If any of the discussions that we've had today have raised questions about your obligations as an employer, please call the team here at the National Retail Association. And finally, as mentioned earlier, if you or someone you know may be experiencing domestic and family violence, please seek support by calling the National Sexual Assault Domestic and Family Violence Counselling Service on 1800 RESPECT or DV Connect on 1800 811 811 for women and 1800 600 636 for men.